The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 37. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. All you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Gathered by the Word. And I just want to go into how important it is to understand what or who the word of the Most High is and exactly how the gathering is taking place because the spirit is heavy right now. Brothers, including the apostles, are going into how important it is to teach the word directly and correctly and to not mangle the scriptures. And I just want to show you that when you mangle the scriptures, you're actually taken away from Yahweh and you're not allowing the word to gather the elect. So I want to start with, actually, let me start with the book of Psalms just to, to prove a quick point because what is the word of the Most High? Let me get this real quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Right, Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. When you read Revelation 19 and 13, it tells you that Yahweh Shai is the word of the Most High. When you read John, the first chapter, it speaks about how the word was from the beginning, and then the word was made flesh. So, if Yahweh Shai is the word, that means every time you misinterpret a scripture, every time you lie on the Holy Scriptures, every time you break down a scripture incorrectly, you're taking away from Yahweh Shai. You're mangling his body. He comes in the volume of the book from Genesis to Revelation, all of the books in between, including the Apographer. There's 80 books and, you know, there's more prophets that have more books. But right now we have what we need and everything we need is contained within the scriptures. That is the word of the Holy One. And that's what's doing the gathering right now spiritually. Now, there's going to be a physical gathering from the four corners, and you can read about that in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, which we may get if we have time. But the point is, right now, we're in the time of ministering. We're in the time of preaching the gospel. We're in the time of teaching. And you're supposed to teach the word correctly because the word is Yahweh Shai, and the word is what's gathering the elect. Right now, we're being gathered from the four winds in the spirit. Brothers may be in Houston dealing with this crazy weather. Brothers may be in Japan, all the way in Europe, all the way. It doesn't matter. Right now, we're all being gathered by this word. This word is going out, and the elect is hearing the word. They're hearing the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They're hearing the prophecies. They're hearing about the 12 tribes of Israel, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as our descendants that are scattered amongst the other ethnic groups. So when you come into the truth and you hear these things, you're hearing Yahweh Shai. You're hearing what his mission statement, you're hearing about who he is, what he died for, and when he's coming back. Because we're clearly at the end, as you can tell through prophecy. So all of that is embodied in the word, everything within the scriptures, the dietary law, the marriage law, the prophecies. Again, Revelation 19 and 10, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So when you don't break down the prophecies correctly, you don't have the spirit of Yahweh Shai and you're not gathering. You're not gathering with Yahweh Shai, you're gathering against him. Now, let me get this in Luke because a lot of people water down the doctrine because they don't understand that Yahweh Shai is the one doing the gathering. They think that it's up to them to gather the elect. So if somebody doesn't get it, they try to water down the word to make them get it. But if you water down the word to the point where it's no longer the word, then Yahweh Shai is not the one doing the gathering. So let me get this real quick. This is St. Luke chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall. This child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So Yahweh is a walking stumbling block. It tells you in Isaiah 8 that he's a rock of offense. So if someone's offended, then they were meant to not get it. That's why Yahweh Shai said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. You're not supposed to take away the parts of the scriptures that may offend people because that's the whole point. It's supposed to offend the people that it's supposed to offend. And it's supposed to gather the elect 
from the east to the west. Those that are meant to get it are supposed to get it. So you can't shy away from certain parts of the scriptures because, oh, this this isn't popular. This doesn't sound cool. This sounds crazy. This is this is antiquated. Oh, they used to do that in the ancient world. Let's not talk about that. No, we're going to talk about that. Why? Because it's part of the word and the word is what's gathering the elect. It says, behold, this child is set for the fall is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. So Yahweh is not for the whole nation right now. He's only for the elect, the remnant on this go round. And even that's part of the word. That's part of his mission statement. That's part of the prophecies that the two thirds are going to be cut off. There's going to be a mass slaughter of the house of Israel, but there's going to be a remnant that's going to be delivered. That's part of Yahweh Shai. So you taking that out to try to teach that the Lord's dealing with everybody. He's dealing with all the nations. That's not Yahweh Shai. That's not the word of the most high. And so what is that gathering? That's gathering dross. That's gathering undesirables. That's gathering members that are not of the elect, which has nothing to do with Yahweh Shai's mission. Yahweh Shai's mission is to actually offend a lot of Israelites. That's I mean, you're not supposed to intentionally go out on the highways and hedges and curse somebody out and just be belligerent. However, if certain topics come up, you're not supposed to shy away from them. What did Apostle Paul say? I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole gospel. If a certain topic comes up that's unpopular in this world or that makes people uncomfortable, then it's your job as a teacher to edify. If it makes them uncomfortable and you edify and they're of the elect, eventually they're going to get it. It doesn't matter if, they, if it sounds crazy initially. You have to go through that because Yahweh went through that. He was cutting people with all kind of parables. And, you know, that's part of the word. The word itself discerns your inner thoughts. That's why in verse 34, it says, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now, how does that happen? Brothers already know. This is letter to the Hebrews. And this is an oldie but goodie. This is one of the first precepts I heard, you know, coming into the truth. And it is more and more true every single day. Every single day I'm in this faith, this scripture becomes more and more true. This is the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of the Most High, now remember, the word of the Most High is what's going to gather the elect from the east to the west, the word of the Holy One. It says, For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the scriptures are, this is the only book that not only do you read the book, the book reads you. The scriptures actually read you. They discern your inner thoughts. When you read the laws of the Most High, a wicked person is going to read that and be condemned. It tells you in John, the third chapter, that those that are in darkness, that like the darkness, they don't want to come to the light. Why? Because their deeds will be reproved. The Holy Bible is the only book that reproves the wicked. It, it exposes, it shines a light on the wicked, and it allows the works of the righteous to be made manifest. This is the only book in the world that does that. You know, you read the Bible, but the Bible's reading you right back. And it says, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai. He's the word of the Most High. And this word literally, it, it cuts straight to the bone marrow, man. Whatever a person's true intentions are. For example, when you're out on the block teaching, you'll have someone come up and say, God loves everybody. I, I love you, brothers. I don't, I don't see color. We're all the same. And then you read the scriptures. You read the judgment of what's going to happen to these heathen. And you see very quickly, they don't love us at all. But if you don't deal with the word, if you don't deal with the scriptures, if you deal with men's opinions, if you deal with men's emotions, if you deal with feelings, you can easily be fooled and dismayed by someone coming up saying one thing, but their innermost thought is the exact opposite. And the scriptures reveal that. The more, the more a person deals with the scriptures, the actual Bible, when you actually go into what this scripture is saying, that scripture is saying, when you go precept upon precept, when you read the commandments, when you go into the Hebrew, when you stick to the script, it discerns what a person's true motives are. You got Jakes that are super duper Israelites until it comes down to dealing with the discipline required to put off the old man, to put off the flesh. Then all of a sudden, eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that Bible stuff. I heard King James was gay. I heard I heard the white man edited the Bible. I heard, I don't know, man, you know, the Bible is like oppressive to women, man. I really don't know about all of that. This word discerns whether or not you're a coon, whether or not you're a simp 
whether or not you're an idiot, whether or not you're slothful, lazy. This word just, it completely exposes who the Lord is dealing with and who he's not dealing with. And all you have to do is read the precepts. Read what the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai would be doing in the last days. And you could look and see clearly there are men on the earth that are doing that. And then you read what the wicked would be doing in the last days. You can clearly see who's doing that. And people that have a problem with the scriptures, it magnifies that. It First it manifests and then it magnifies. You see immediately, okay, this person has a problem with order. Okay, this person has a problem with prophecy. This person has a problem with what Yahweh Shai said he's going to come back to do, which makes them what? An anti-Messiah. This word reveals all of that. And the only way to do that is to bring out the word. You can't shy away from certain topics like, oh, look, we can't we can't really talk about the sisters, brother. Well, what are you talking about? That the rebuking the so-called black woman not only reproves the few sisters that are actually going to repent and get right and get ready for the day of the Lord, but it also exposes these simps in Israel. So it serves a great purpose. Now, you're not supposed to dedicate your whole ministry to complaining about black women. That's, you know, that's the job of the manosphere, to just whine about black women and argue with single mothers every day. That's not what we're called to do. We have much more important things to talk about. But if the topic comes up, you deal with it in grace and you deal with it honestly. You don't shy away from the truth of the scriptures because you're taken away from the mission statement of Yahweh Shai. He's the word and he's gathering the elect. This spirit, listen, this book is a spirit in itself, and the spirit is gathering the elect men, women, and children that need to hear this. Our people need this word, man. You're not supposed to uh, draw back your sword from blood, as it tells you in Ezekiel. But let me get this in Sirach, because as I said in St. John, the third chapter, uh, the wicked, they don't want their deeds. Let, let me just get to John real quick first, before I get that Sirach. This is the gospel according to St. John, chapter three, I'm gonna start at 18. He that believeth on him, Yahweh Shai, the word of the Most High, is not condemned. So no matter what sins you've committed, if you believe on Yahweh Shai, you're not condemned. You don't have damnation to look forward to. You have salvation to look forward to. Why? Because you believe in Yahweh Shai. What does that word mean? Yah meaning he, Yahweh Shai is deliverer. It tells you in Matthew, the first chapter, his name shall be called Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people. All right. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And that is what the scriptures do. That's why when you read in Hebrews 4 and 12, it tells you that the word discerns the hearts and intents of men. Because if someone is scared to come to the light, there's only one reason for that. It's because their deeds are evil. Someone that's righteous, someone that truly believes, you're going to go towards the light. This light is what we've been looking for our whole lives. Akim have been wondering, what, what is the meaning of all this? What, when is this going to end? Why is everything so upside down and how can we how can we make everything better? That's what you want ultimately if you're a righteous spirit. So the righteous are being gathered by what? By the word of the Holy One. We're being gathered by the word and the two thirds, the dross, the degenerates of the nation of Israel, as well as these heathen, they're being repelled by the word. They're being offended by the word. They're being cast aside. It's a, a very tedious process, but it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. And you're not supposed to shy away from that. Now, let me get this Sirach because is going to belabor the point of why we're not to, uh, to water down the word. The whole process of gathering involves teaching the word correctly and not being afraid to offend people. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 14. Whoso feareth Yahweh will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early shall find favor. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. And the word hypocrite means actor, someone that's pretending to love the Lord. You know, as it is written, our people draw to the Most High with their lips. They like to say how much they love the Lord. But when you go into the scriptures, when you stick to the script, that draws out who's really about this and who's just playing games. Verse 16, they that fear Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai shall find judgment and shall kindle justice as a light. Now, what do we just read in John 3? Men that love darkness hate the light and they, they run from the light, man. It's like roaches when the lights come on. But the elect, they're going to be drawn to the light. And here it says, they shall kindle justice as a light. Verse 17, a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse 
according to his will. And that's a big part of the law. That's a big part of the word. Yahweh Shai, he, listen, if you come across the truth and you're in the world and you're of the elect, you're going to get cut, period. You're going to hear something that's going to offend you and it's going to cause you to, if you're of the elect, it's going to cause you to change. You're going to reflect on the things you've done wrong. You're going to meditate on the precepts. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. When you hear something that offends you and you're a man of the Lord, it's going to make you think, wait a minute, why am I offended by the word? Something must be wrong with me. That's how a righteous man thinks. But a sinful man will not be reproved. He's going to find an excuse to his own will. What does that mean? When you rebuke a wicked man, he's not going to think in himself, man, there's got to be something wrong with me. He's going to think, no, there's something wrong with you. There's got to be something wrong with that Bible. The Bible's been tampered with. Or if he's a complete reprobate, he's going to think there's something wrong with the Most High. And since he can't get to the Most High, he's going to take out his frustrations and his anger on the men that are preaching the word. That's why it's so important to stand stiffly for the name Yahweh. And teach the word correctly and directly. Not only are we gathering the elect, but we're also repelling the two thirds. We're repelling sinful men that will not be reproved. Now, if you have one of these soft unity camp doctrines where everybody can come together, then you're going to gather everybody. That's not Yahweh Shai doing the gathering. That's you. That's why you have a bunch of degenerates with dreadlocks hanging down their back. They got lineups. They're, they're shaving their beard. They're still simps in 2021. A lot of these dudes eat all sorts of abominations. They pop their woman on the Sabbath. They're still trying to be rappers. There's all kind of madness going on in Israel. Why? Because the leaders of those camps are not teaching the word directly and correctly. They're teaching their own watered down doctrine to gather as many people as possible. But the Lord is not interested in gathering as many Israelites as possible. He's interested in gathering the elect. When you read the prophecy in Amos, it tells you, let me get that real quick. I didn't have it written, but it's a, it's a beautiful prophecy. It's gonna go right with the point. This is the book of Amos chapter nine and verse nine. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as a corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Now let that sink in. The Most High is saying, look, I'm going to scatter my elect across the four winds, across all of these different nations, across all of these different ethnicities. They're going to look like the heathen. They're going to speak the language of the heathen. But through this word, I'm going to gather every single member of the elect and the least grain shall not fall upon the earth. Just just imagine having a fistful of sand in your hand and you just throw it in the air and you catch every single grain before it touches the ground. That's what the Most High is doing with the elect. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe the Most High has the power to gather every single member of the elect that's scattered across the four winds? There's allegedly eight billion people on the earth and the Most High knows exactly which member is of the elect. He knows exactly who's a prophet. He knows exactly who's going to hear the words of the prophets. He knows exactly who every single member of the elect is and he's going to save every single one. Do you believe that? If you believe that, then why would you water down the Bible to appeal to a bunch of people that don't really believe in the Bible? Because that's what you're doing. You're taking parts of the Bible out so it can appeal to someone that if they were to hear that scripture, if they were to hear it broken down correctly, they would throw their hands up and walk away. Like, nah, I don't know about all of this. I'm not, I'm not really with this. Well, the Most High is not really with them. So you're supposed to teach the word. Let me get that Timothy. Since I keep quoting it, it's time for it to come out. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you go into this word rightly dividing in the Greek, it's Strong's G 3718, which is orthotomeo. And orthotomeo, the definition is to cut straight, to get straight to the point, to make straight and smooth, to handle aright, to teach the truth directly and correctly. Let me read that again. To handle a right, to teach the truth directly and correctly. And you have a lot of Jakes that are teaching the word incorrectly. They're being complete degenerates. Why? Because they don't believe in the gathering. They don't believe that the Most High 
is gathering the elect from the four winds by the word of the Holy One. They think it's up to them. They watch the apostles, they watch different great millstone camps with their nose turned up and their arms folded. And they think, well, you know what? I could do a better job than them. If I don't talk about the black woman so much, then you know we can get the sisters to get right. If I don't talk about the white man so much, then maybe my channel won't be deleted. If I don't talk about uh, this type of person too much or that type of, if I just come with smooth words, then you know I can grow my channel bigger and I can build a bigger ministry. The Most High is not dealing with that. He actually created Yahawashai to be a walking stumbling block. Let's get that next. This is the book of Romans, chapter nine, epic chapter, but I'm gonna skip straight down to the point. This is verse 33. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, right? Whosoever shall believe on Yahawashai shall not be ashamed. Now, you have people that are ashamed of Yahawashai, but what did he say? If you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you before my father. But those of you that confess me, I'm going to confess your name before my father. So every Israelite that sticks to the script, that doesn't water down the word, you have to believe that Yahawashai is in fact praying for you to Yahweh, the Most High himself, is hearing from the intercessor. He's hearing from our mediator because we're standing so stiffly for his name. So we have nothing to be ashamed of. And it says, as it is written, written where? When you see as it is written in the scriptures, that's an apostle quoting a prophet. That's someone in the so-called New Testament quoting something from the so-called Old Testament. Let's, let's get further insight on what apostle Paul is talking about. This is the book of Isaiah chapter eight. And I'm gonna start up a little bit. This is verse 13. It says, sanctify Yahweh, which sanctify means to make holy. You have to set apart Yahweh from all other gods because he's the only true and living power. Yahweh Shai is his word. It says, the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread, right? You're not supposed to be afraid of what people think. You're not supposed to have a dread of someone's opinion. Well, I don't like the way he said that. Oh, this person doesn't like me. Let me water down the scriptures so that then I can be more accepted by the masses of Israel. Let me let me be a Hebrew rapper and I can take hip hop and mix it with the truth and then I can do this and that and sell my mixtape and my beard oil. The, the Most High didn't tell you to do that. He told you to preach the word directly and correctly and you watering down the word to be loved of this world. That means what? You have a fear and a dread of men. You have a fear of what men think. You have a dread of men's opinion. It says, and let him be your fear, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and let him be your dread and he shall be for a sanctuary, but, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel and for a gen and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So Yahweh Shai, this word is a rock of offense. People are gonna be offended if they're not right. And if you're not right, but you're a member of the elect, you're gonna hear the word and repent. And that's another thing. You have members of the elect, they're actually righteous souls, but they're committing wickedness right now out of ignorance. So it's your responsibility as an Israelite, as a teacher, as a neighbor, to rebuke your brother. And in order to be a brother, you have to be a man. You can't be a brother without being a man. And it tells you in Leviticus 19 to not hate your brother. You have to rebuke your neighbor. That's, that's the true love of the scriptures, to tell your brother when he's going off. So when you water down the doctrine to appeal to reprobate Jakes, some of those men could actually be of the elect. And it's your responsibility to stand up and say, look, this is what the scriptures are really saying about this topic. You need to cut out this behavior or the Most High is going to kill you. You have to be man enough to say that because that is what's gathering the elect, the word. It tells you in Proverbs 9 and 8 to reprove not a scorner lest he hate you, but to rebuke a wise man and he'll love you. So if you never rebuke anybody, how can you tell who's a scorner or who's wise? This word is doing the reproving. This word is discerning between the righteous and the wicked. And you have to rebuke in order to do that. Let the word do its job, which is to gather the elect. Verse 15, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. So Yahushua's mission statement, as we read in Luke, the second chapter, he's for the rising and fall of many. He's for the rising of the elect of Israel, but he's for the fall of the dross, the two thirds, the wicked, these people that hate the most high. They hate his father. You think he's trying to save everybody? You think he's trying to save Israelites that hate being Israelites, that hate being chosen, that hate the responsibility of keeping the commandments, that hate him? You think he's with them, man? No. 
See, these so-called Christians, they'll bring up, the Lord prayed for the men that crucified him so he loves everybody. No, 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 no. Yahweh Shai was praying for the elect among those men that were being wicked out of ignorance. You can read in the book of Acts, those same men that took part in crucifying Yahweh Shai, when they heard about it, they repented. Meaning what? They were doing it out of ignorance. They had to be reproved by Apostle Peter, and we're coming in that same stead today. We're reproving the Israelites that are doing wickedness out of ignorance, and that takes a man to stand up and say, look, this is what the scripture says, this is what it is. You can either get down with the Lord's program, or you're going to be destroyed, period. There's no middle ground. Now, since I mentioned Apostle Peter, let's get this next. This is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Again, this is the same thing Apostle Paul quoted. But it says, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, Yahawashai, and a stone of stumbling, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So the elect of the nation of Israel is appointed to hear the word, to repent and be delivered. And the two thirds are appointed to hear the word, be disobedient and be destroyed. That's a part of the rising and fall of the many in Israel. That's Yahweh Shai. That's, that's how the gathering is being done by the word. The word is gathering the elect and it's repulsing and repelling the two thirds, the dross, the wicked. Okay, so it's very important to teach the word directly and correctly. So we started in Baruch 4. We're going to end in Baruch 5. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 5, verse 5. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high, and look about toward the east, and behold thy children, gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of the Most High. Right, the Most High, he's remembering us, and we're remembering him. What did Apostle Peter say? I'm putting you in remembrance, though you once knew this. I believe Jude said the same thing. This is verse 6. For they departed from thee on foot, and were led away of their enemies. But the Most High bringeth them unto thee, exalted with glory as children of the kingdom. So we were led away on foot and then eventually on ships, and we're gonna be gathered by the word of the Holy One in those chariots, man, it's beautiful. The story of the nation of Israel is epic, man. We're, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the nation of Israel are legends. This is a legendary story we're reading. And Abaratazah, all you brothers make it to the end because as it says, we're gonna rejoice when we're gathered in those chariots. It's gonna be a beautiful sight to behold. So there's no need to water down the word, Jake. The word is already living water. You don't have to water it down. So Abaratazah, this was edifying to the elect. I wanna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash, double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.